Hi, I'm Ed Peterson. I'm uh, owner of Historic Homes, and we built the uh, Windsor Court uh, project where this home is located. Uh, we refer to this home as the Dover home because it has an English uh, take on it. Uh, the entire project here at Windsor Court is what we call English Tudor and French Country Revival. And this happened in about the, uh, after World War I and a lot of the architects and designers came back from World War I and spent a lot of time in England or France and revived the English Tudor and the French country architecture. So you will find many houses like this in our neighborhood here and we've tried to keep that same period of design. Uh, this house in particular has some very unique features and as we go through, I will kind of try to explain some of those features that you typically won't see in most homes, uh, particularly here in the Inner Mountain West. Uh, to start with, the, the glass on uh, everything that faces the street is pure, true leaded glass. And you might be able to see that some of this glass is not clear. It's got a wave to it. That's called antique, French antique glass. And uh, that's the type of glass that was uh, uh, around in the 1800s until manufacturing uh, in, uh, process improved where they could get clear glass. But we wanted a more authentic look, so we put that in. And all of the windows have different, different panels and they may have some of that uh, antique glass in them. Uh, in the dining room over here, there are a couple of unique features. Uh, design of the window here uh, is, comes right from England and this window here in the front has a beautiful crest in it. That crest is uh, a crest from a plate uh, that was uh, part of the Royal China from England and the crest represents the celebration of Queen Elizabeth's 50th anniversary on the throne. And so we thought that would be very appropriate since this is such an English Tudor home that we would install that in the glass. And so we put that in the uh, leaded glass windows. You will notice in the house the arches. They're not circular, uh, but they come to a point. And this is pretty traditional for many of the older English homes. You can see it here. You can see the door has the same feel to it. All of the entries throughout. It's very consistent. We, when we design a house, we like to have consistency uh, within it. And so you will notice over here, the arch has a point to it. There's a point to the small door. There's a point upstairs as well. It kind of comes up to a soft, uh, a, a soft point. Uh, all of the handrails, as we go through, the handrails were built in place. They were not manufactured in a plant and brought here. We took all of the components, placed them in here, and ended up with a lovely uh, feel for the, uh, uh, for the, the uh, railings throughout, throughout the house. Over here in the office, again, it's the same thing. The doors have the same glass, and we, we put a couple of, of panels in there with uh, some wreaths of uh, ivy. I uh, thought that that would be a kind of a nice touch for the, for the room here. And, uh, uh, and it fit, fit the decor of the house. Uh, coming into the great room, we've tried to follow that same pattern in the cabinetry by having a point go up to them so that Again, it's that concept of, of consistency through the house, including the fireplace. Fireplace coming to a little soft point to the, at the top of it. And it, it just tended to fit the, the decor of the house uh, very well. Over here we have the kitchen. And the, uh, the kitchen is uh, uh, very unique. Uh, here we have the refrigerator and the freezer, which is designed to appear like, a, like a, uh, an armoire. And uh, so it gives a little different feel to it. Um, again, leaded glass with antique uh, uh, glass in the, the cabinets. This piece over here is, is very unique. 
This antique, this is a sideboard, and it's from France, and it would be dated between 1880 and 1890. Uh, we may know the exact, may have known the exact date, but memory won't won't uh, play, uh, won't come to me. These are not panels that are stuck on. This is originally carved in here, and if you were to stand up here and touch it as I'm doing, you can see that all of this is done by hand, and it's and you can almost like a leather craft in in parts of this. All of this beautiful beautiful woodwork on here, and we felt that that really would fit the house decor very well so we designed the house to put that and slide that right in into that spot right there and with its antique handles and and carvings throughout it's a masterfully beautiful piece of, uh, of furniture but yet it also can be used practical because it has doors has places to put spice rack etc etc et et Outside, you can see, if we film through there, we have some historic hinges. These hinges are designed after many hinges on, on the, uh, uh, in England and in France. You will note that the very large hinges, these are faux hinges. They're not actually, they don't function as hinges, but they have the design of hinges so that it gives that flair again for the English um, uh, Tudor look and a lot of castles and, and uh, wonderful churches in Great Britain ha and in France have similar type, and some are even much more elaborate than that. But they give just a special flavor for the, for the house. Above the, the uh, uh, walkway up above, we have uh, uh, some corbels that we put in. We just thought it would may maybe add an architectural touch to the house. Um, uh, both my son, who is, who is my designer, he and I design the houses and he does the drawings. We are both uh, uh, convinced that a great house should stand on its own with no furniture and no decorations in it, that the architectural features of the house should speak to you and say, th this is a place that I would l be comfortable living in, instead of relying solely on the decorations of the house. And so we've tried to stay consistent with things that were architecturally uh, part of the feel of the house, but, but items that would be uh, uh, ornamental and yet get your attention and give you that soft feel that comes with the house. This house has the laundry right next to the master bedroom uh, so that there's not a lot of traffic that needed for, for moving uh, uh, clothes in and out of closets. And here we have the master, master bedroom. This is, this is organized in such a way that, that the theory was that you could lay on the bed and you could see out the windows and see the wonderful view, particularly of Timpanogos, which is, which is uh, to the north. And so that's why this window over here has that, that option. Uh, above the fireplace, there's a, this is all fit for a television to go in here, but it can be hidden away by keeping the doors closed. Um, the bathroom, uh, shower tub toilet which is separate and uh, the shower I think the, uh, sunflower it's a sunflower that you can turn the water on and it can fall on you like you're in a rainstorm and oh and it has a steam also in the shower there's a steam steam outlet I, I uh, forgot in there so you can close the door and you can treat that as and sit there and have a good steam bath as well as regular regular shower Okay, let's go upstairs and, uh, and see the bedrooms.
This house, as with many houses in England and France, has a very steep roof. And because of that steep roof, we were able to build the bedrooms up here utilizing attic trusses. And because of the steep pitch on the roof, the house doesn't look like a great big box. It has more of a, a softer feel to it. And, uh, and they usually end up with a lot of dormers that pop out. And you can see that on this house. Another interesting feature that you get when you have uh, steep roofs like that is all of the rooms end up having some very interesting architectural features to them, like all of the angles, because you can see where the roof lines are going up. And in this common area down here, you can see the roof lines up and then popping out with the, with the, uh, uh, the dormers. This end of the house has a nice little, fun little play area down here. And we tried to bring in the outside roof line in here to kind of give it a little look like it was maybe kind of added on. And so there's a wonderful little place here for children to play. We have a crown uh, crest in the leaded glass window. Uh, there's a couple, you'll see a couple of lines through the window there. Uh, that's just a lead line in, in, in Great Britain and in France, when a window would break, they would not replace that panel, but they would merely just put a piece of lead to cover over it. And that's why we did that. The glass isn't broken, but it gives the appearance of having been broken and repaired. We wanted to give an old world feel to it, so we put that in there. Here we again have these interesting architectural features. Instead of just a flat wall with a door, we end up having some kind of interesting architectural uh, design. And then in here you, can, you will note the, the steep roof coming up and it just gives a, a, a little different feel than you would get by just having a square or a rectangular room with a, with a flat ceiling on it. On this side we have a laundry for the upstairs or a bathroom, excuse me, for, for, for the upstairs. Again, this becomes a dormer because of the roof line and it pops out in the, into the front of the house. Cabinets in here again have a, a beautiful uh, feel to them and they're kind of a period look. If you were to go back to many of the old manor houses, they have many vanities like this. In, in the good old days, they didn't have plumbing, so you wouldn't have a plumbing here, but you would have a bowl, and then they would bring the water in, hot water or whatever to utilize uh, for that. We even, on, on this little cutout spot, I, I failed to notice this, that we wanted it to look kind of like a separate unit. So we put little windows here, and again, if you, if you were to see the detail of the glass, it's an antique glass. It's not a clear glass, and so you can kind of see the waves in the, in the glass. Um, that's not the camera being out of focus. It's the glass being uh, put in that was, was antique in style. Here's a nice uh, built-in uh, piece here for, for children that are students. You could use it for adults could use it. And it's kind of built in with a couple of desks uh, uh, here. It just kind of makes it comfortable uh, for an area to, to study and a quiet area. Down at this end of the house, we have another bathroom. It has its, own, its vanity, similar type of design uh, to it um, that fit. And uh, we have a bedroom here at the end of the house. This bedroom has a, another unique feature of laying in bed and looking up and having an unobstructed, beautiful view of the mountains. And that was done by design. So we, instead of having the roof slope off this way at this end, we brought it on up and put a gable there so that you, we could have that large window there to get the beautiful, the beautiful view of the... And in the summer months, the sun sets at the west. This is facing northeast, so there's no direct sun in here. So you can enjoy that view without having the sun in your eyes and getting in the way. And here's another bedroom in here. 
that has its, its own built-in closets for it. Again, you'll see the roof lines and the dormer that, that pops out. And uh, this has been decorated very, very uh, nicely, as you can see in the video. Handles on all of the doors are lever type handles. And we tried to get something that kind of gave an antique feel uh, to it so that it would match the overall concept of the house. We're, uh, both my son and I, as builders and designers, are really into trying to have an entire cohesive house and not walking into a, to an area and saying, wow, this is completely different than the rest of the house. We try to kind of keep that same tone and in this particular house, all of the furniture seems to fit that same thing.